Welcome to True White Allies, where we celebrate the forgotten history of white anti-racists so their stories can inspire you to take action today. This episode tells the story of Anthony Denizé, a teacher who advocated for the education of black people. In 1784, when a man called Anthony Benizet died, hundreds of Philadelphia's black residents came out to mourn him. Anthony Benizet dedicated his life to fighting against slavery and for the education of black people at a time when many saw them as inferior and unintelligent. It was born in 1713 into a wealthy Huguenot family in Saint Quentin in France. The Huguenots were French Protestants who suffered persecution from the Catholic majority. When Anthony Benizet was two years old, his family fled from France to escape persecution. First, they moved to Rotterdam in the Netherlands, and then they lived in London, England. Eventually, they moved to Pennsylvania in 1731. In Pennsylvania, Anthony became a Quaker, and he married a Quaker minister called Joyce Marriott. He found that his calling was to be an educator. He taught and wrote many books that talked about the importance of education. He started to teach black people in the evenings from his home in 1750. In 1754, he established a secondary school for girls, he even created a program for a girl who had a hearing and speech impediment in the school to participate. Oh look, inclusion and intersectionality even in the 1700s. I guess it's not that hard. Anthony Benizet spent time among black people in Philadelphia, and they knew him well. He convinced the Quakers to build a free school for black people to attend during the day. Aside from being a teacher, Anthony Benizet campaigned against slavery. He challenged the idea that black people were inferior and less intelligent than white people. He once wrote, I am bold to assert that the notion entertained by some, that the blacks are inferior in their capacities, is a vulgar prejudice, founded on the pride or ignorance of their lordly masters, who have kept their slaves at such a distance as to be unable to form a right judgment of them. Yes, there was a time when people saw black people as unintelligent and would say it openly. Isn't it fascinating how there are people who still think this way, but just don't say it directly. Like when a company's employee population isn't diverse and you talk about hiring people from different backgrounds and someone says, we don't want to lower our hiring bar. Hmm, are you saying that people who aren't white are less intelligent and can't meet your hiring bar? I'm just asking for a friend. In 1783, he wrote a letter to Queen Charlotte, the wife of George III of England, urging her to think of how enslaved people felt he warned of the divine wrath that would face a country that was part of such injustice in the letter. To write one of his books, Anthony Benizet collected stories of slave traders and other people involved in the trade. In the book, Anthony Benizet pointed out that if there were no demand for slavery, the supply of enslaved people would not exist anymore. He said that without purchases, there would be no trade, and consequently, every purchaser, as he encourages the trade, becomes partaker in the guilt of it. In 1775, he founded one of America's first abolitionist groups. It still exists today as the Pennsylvania Abolition Society. So I read that the society didn't have any black members until 1842, a man of mixed heritage called Robert Purvis. Okay people, if you're going to start any organization today to help any community, make sure you have members of said community in the group. I see some diversity and inclusion consultancies and I look at the founders and the employees online and there are no black people or people of color. Why aren't you practicing what you preach? And don't give me that diversity of thought BS. You can have the diversity of thought and visible diversity, okay? Do better. Anthony Benizet died in 1784, and part of his estate went to supporting the education of African and Native American people. White people who want to be allies can learn much from Anthony Benizet. For example, spend time with people from different types of communities. And not just because you want to be able to say that you have black friends, or to be able to use them as a shield when you've done something problematic, like said the N-word. But it's in the song, why can't I say it? Just don't do it. Spend time with people of different races and ethnicities to expand your worldview and learn a thing or two. But at the same time, don't treat people like walking encyclopedias. So tell me, Aisha, what does the black community think about climate change? How the hell should I know? It's not like we have yearly conventions where we discuss this stuff and agree on a point of view. I'm just one black person. We don't all think the same, you know. During Anthony Benizet's time, there was no Google. But today, we have access to information at our fingertips. Don't put the burden of your education on people who face racism. True allies own their education. Hi, I'm Nathan Banks, and if you enjoyed watching this video, please like it and share it with two white people you think would benefit from watching it.